Africana studies has been at the forefront consistently wherever it has started in challenging the Eurocentric bases of knowledge, in challenging Eurocentric ideas, in creating spaces where we can transform knowledge production, where we can advance the ways that we think about the world, the ways in which we understand how we operate in the world, the way in which human beings are identified in the world. I think this is how it was thought of street protest against overt racial, racial hostility on campus, culminating in the Blue Street Hall takeover. The precipitating event, a burning cross placed on board house, the black woman's co op on the campus. We must not forget that the founding of Africa Studies in 1965 was also met with hostility. The founding director, Dr. James Turner, upon arriving to campus, required police escorts because of threats to his life and family. We must not forget that within a year after its founding, the Africana Center was set up by my arsonists, an act that terrorized black people and their allies on campus. Because in it, you see very clearly the man, the Vice President Kennedy, is writing on behalf of President Perkins, and they're saying, we have decided that the Africana would be an intercollegiate, freestanding, academic in, in unit. That was purposeful. And it said, and not to be placed in the College of Arts and Science, which would allow it would be overwhelmed by the vested interest in the college. But let's look at that 69. It was not adversary of blacks to whites. That student movement in 69 opened up this university so that there's a student assembly, that there's an employee representative on the board of trustees today, that there is a student member of the board of trustees, there is an alumni member of the board of trustees. Those students coming in the first generation from where they came from, they didn't just argue for their own admissions, they argued for need-blind admissions, right? And need-based financial aid. That was a revolution in American higher education. Because the university is going through an unprecedented time of austerity, the way I decided to deal with this austerity is by removing resources at the top of the university to be redistributed to academic units. So it's not like the, the, the center is against fiscal austerity. We just don't understand why that has to coincide with this downsizing into the College of Arts and Sciences, where essentially those funds will be up for grabs for any department within that, that college. For instance, before um, the dean of the College of Arts and Science, Sciences was actually informed of the decision before anyone in the Africana Center was, and was sworn to secrecy, and proceeded to send emails out to the chairs of all the departments, English department, anthropology department, history department, um, to try to have a meeting to discuss how this decision will affect funds for those departments. So I want a larger and stronger Africana, and I want to serve appropriately the way all other highly ranked Africana programs are, and that is in the central part of the university, the College of Arts and Sciences. I wanted to say as well, structural racism works in a number of ways. The Dean's approach was very infantilizing. Infantilizing is one of the classic colonial ways of racializing somebody. It's telling you you don't know what's good for you. I feel like a child. I'm the big man and I'm going to decide for you. That's the approach he used. So what's actually happening here, the reality, is that this university is investing more into Africana, not less, and is moving things in a direction that lines up with what every other top-ranked place does. And, and if you're going to grow us by dictating that we have to have joint appointments in there, then you're not growing us. No unit would accept that. Sociology wouldn't accept it, government wouldn't accept it, history wouldn't accept it, economics wouldn't accept it, anthropology. Tell them, we want you to join a point with someone else. All the then there's no basis for you. You have people wearing two hats all the time. Who are they loyal to? They're going to go where the money is. And the money's in the White House, not the Black House. So that's not growing. We're an Africana faculty, faculty outside of Africana that will have sole appointments. They, they have them now. But once they retire, will those appointments remain? Future, future appointments. 
cannot be said yet. I'm sorry. You haven't said it cannot be said yet. But my, we do want, uh, make, 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 let me make myself clear, we do want, and I think Dr. Khan agrees, more joint appointments. Effective ones, though. Effective ones that give more courses for students, effective ones that increase the uh, profile, the reputation of the center, and uh, achieve the goals that we all have for this. So I deserve, to know, I deserve to know what's going on before you make a decision. I just deserve to know. I mean, even if you do make a decision about what stages Cornell is going to go into, I think that when I look at your strategic plan in terms of public engagement, I find that you failed to do that. I, I want you to know that we're coming from an informed perspective. I think I know this institution about as well as anyone, and let me say, I have not seen anything take place like this has taken place. Well, they knew that was dishonorable. They had gone further, he said, talked to a committee on the board of trustees about this, told them, but keep it quiet. They went to the dean of the faculty, Talk to him about it, keep it quiet. Went to people in campus life, talked to them, said keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. Then went to the dean of the, fa of the arts college and said to them, keep it quiet. Now, even if you say your intention was not unkind, what kind of image are you conjuring up in these people about us? Provost and I have agreed, and he has at my request, divested the office of those units, of the units report to deans. Just so you know what the facts are, every other top-ranked African program in the United States, every other top-ranked African program in the United States, reports to a dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at all universities against which we compare ourselves. This idea of let's really move towards the direction of Yale. And I keep mentioning that because that was really, really the push in the beginning until we started to challenge it. So I want to remind everybody what the rhetoric was when we began this discussion was. We want to, we want to match every other top university. Um, and I, that's a little offensive to me as a student here at Cornell. I think that we are great in our own right. And so people don't think much deeper and they say, what's wrong? They want to give you more money. They're going to grow your faculty. And they're going to give you a PhD. Boy, that's wonderful. That's birthday of seven days a week. <laughs> well, if they were going to do all that, they would have been happy to come sit down and talk with us. Put all that cake on the table. We would have been chirping. Many times, many years. But in the end, the provost has to decide which units report to him and which units are better served in uh, the colleges. We explicitly asked them for written proof of, of what they were basing their decision on. We asked for the, for the actual uh, details of the decision itself. And we were actually told that it didn't exist. Yeah, uh, he said true. to us, he said to us, I, you know, um, this was something that I just personally decided. Now that, Yes, I, at that point, 
um, we were in the midst of the challenges and um, and was uh, uh, with Africana and with the uh, the uh, situation in that center, which I think all of you know about. And uh, but I had not yet made my decision at that point, so I continued to discuss it, think about it. It wasn't the right time to make that decision, and so it was uh, this fall when I finally made my decision. We were also informed that these plans have been in the works for months, but were strong on the students at the very end of the semester. This decision was made entirely by the provost. It is unilateral, patronizing, and autocratic. It was done with absolutely no discussion with students, faculty, staff, and alumni of Africana Studies or with communities of color in Africa. We believe that this is taking Africana Studies throughout the past with, to destruction. Why? Why are they so? Obsessed about controlling that voice and the viciousness of taking such action when students are busy. I think Cornell should have some kind of soul searching at all the events, tragic events last year. They should be a little more careful, mindful about student well being. July 1st, he will be um, reporting to another dean within the College of Arts and Sciences. It will lose its independent status as an academic unit, which means, and this is one of the biggest issues for us, that they lose primary discretion on the budget, which includes um, issues of faculty hires, lecture series, colloquiums, um, and bringing in community scholars, uh, which often happens and hasn't happened. If we could trust you, then come back, come back to the table, Put it back the way it That's was, right. and then let's sit down and let's reason with it. That if you're a program, um, you can, the programs do not, are not able to define or to hire people, to tenure people. So they need a additional um, department to sign on and have them come in as a joint program. We know that ethnic studies programs have suffered when they had these requirements. Um, here at Cornell and at other places, uh, seeing the way Latino studies and Asian American studies have had serious um, hardships in maintaining um, faculty when it comes up for the tenure decision. Um, that to me is a big red flag. Like, and when, that, when the provost was asked that question in this very room, he was unable to answer it. Um, in fact, his initial response was that he didn't think he would have much luck recruiting people who were not interested in joint appointments. Um, and that's we contend that the quality and effectiveness of the Africana Studies and Research Center as a center of knowledge and the principal force for faculty diversity is rooted in a distinctive relationship to the university beyond the jurisdiction of College of Arts and Sciences. The Africana Studies and Research Center was founded as a center for specific intellectual and pedagogical reasons. Those reasons remain as relevant today as they were more than 40 years ago when the Africana Center was first established. We regard the provost's contention that his decision is motivated by a desire to increase the center's faculty and resources toward the establishment of a PhD program as hollow and counterintuitive. Those of us who are well versed in university systems and structures understand that this organizational shift is deeply tied to issues of power, control, and financial resources. And I would bracket white power. So I commend you, all of you, who have been working so hard to make this happen. And I hope and I'm confident with your support, your determination, if a handful of students were able to force the administration to create Africana, you can also help preserve it while you're here. So thank you, and Aluta continua.